Support for the Cliff Notes podcast comes from Acapella Apparel, an idea born from a love of hip-hop, funk, and soul music and its surrounding cultures. With fashion being a huge visual part of the cultures, they've created expressive images to pay homage, invoke nostalgia, and showcase the elements that make up the lifestyle and cultures of these genres. Acapella, apparel for the music lifestyle. For more information, check out acapella.com. That's A K E. P E L E dot com. Welcome back to another episode of the Clip Notes Podcast. Um, this one's really cool. It, it is funny because I've had an opportunity to, to connect with, with folk um, you know, more than one time over the years. And, and it's funny because this, this gentleman and I kind of go back all related to. Um, you know what I do for you know supporting the the local scene, whether it be um, working for the neighborhood or Mike Checker, this, that, and the third. And um, like it was a family situation, I met a member of his family. And they were like, "Yo, you know my brother, he does this, that, and the third. And I was like, "Wait, yeah, I think we connected a while ago." And uh, he just reminded me of the stuff. And, and it's funny because I know the stuff that you do, but he remind like you just make those connections. And I was like, "Oh, so." Just really, really glad to have an opportunity to chop it up with you about what you're doing now. Um, really talk about how it's grown over the years since we first met. But um, let them know who you are, man. Yeah. Um, I, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It is is definitely an honor to be on your show. I'm a fan for sure, and and uh, and not only of of the show that you do, but of of your involvement in the hip hop community and your contributions. Thank you. Um, so uh, so I thank you for that uh, for taking the time. Um, I'm Carlos Chavez. I run the organization called Morpheus Youth Project, uh, like Morpheus, like the red and blue pill. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, the reason that we use the name Morpheus is because it represents the Greek god of dreams. And so the idea is to think about is to, you know, of course, fulfilling dreams, that sort of thing, you know. But um, that's kind of where it came from. You know, it was a partner of mine named Phil Stockton, who he and I were the ones who started the organization back in the day. And and uh, he was very into Greek mythology, and that yeah. was, you know, part of where that name came from. So, That's what's up. so how how old is Morpheus Youth Project? Uh, about eight years old. Um, we, I mean, I mean, it started eight years ago. I guess officially, it's probably more like seven. We we became a a fiscally sponsored nonprofit in 2011 at the tail, tail end of 2011, but we, but we were doing stuff in 2010. That's when Phil and I first got connected. We were both doing uh, groups at McLaren Youth Corrections. We were volunteers there. I was doing a radio journalism group. You know, I was teaching guys how to do stuff like this. Yeah. And um, and he was doing a, a theater group, you know, teaching. He had a really cool improvisational theater class that he did, which I thought was really useful at teaching the guys how to um, kind of... Um, veer away from like violence and that sort of thing you know with the way that they go about doing it and how to interact and how to i actually thought it was really good for their social skills you know and and that sort of thing and i was doing something really similar with the radio and then uh, a good friend of ours you know a partner uh, with uh they she she's head of an organization called hope partnership Uh, her name's kathleen fullerton um she had been running an organization there um or in charge of the organization and put us in contact. I've been, that's our biggest partner. We've been partners with them ever since they eventually um, became part of Janus youth programs. Yeah. But what they do is um, they're at McLaren youth correctional facility and they bring in volunteers and other agencies like resolutions, Northwest right around Portland. Um, and just folks in the community that want to share um, some some uh, activities, skills, and that kind of stuff with young people, and um, she, uh, both of our groups are really popular, and we were both were talking about the possibility of starting a nonprofit of some kind, and she said, "Well, you guys should get together," and we did, and we hit it off, and you know, Phil's a good guy, yeah. and uh, you know, he's no longer with the organization, but you know, has, has been a supporter, you know, the whole time, and yeah. he's just kind of moved on and done some other things. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, he's still really involved in theater and uh, just a good guy. That's so awesome. yeah, good folks. So when you think about what you're what you're doing and what you've done, um, and what, so if 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 you've been doing this for seven to eight years, we probably first connected 
early on. Like when it was pretty early, yeah. There. Yeah, you were in, I think, Gresham yeah, at a station out there. Yeah, I was at, at KZME. Yeah, yeah. That's, mm-hmm. that was the one. Yeah, it was yeah, a little cool. DJ Weather. Yeah, 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 DJ Weather. Yeah. And that was funny because uh, I was, that was a total surprise for me. He was like, hey, man, come with me, man. I'm there, you know, I'm going to be on this radio show. And I was like, all right, cool. And we were kind of listening to you know some of it on the way in. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, cool, and um, and uh, we went in there, and Weather was doing his thing, and you had a, one of his mixes going, and and uh, you guys were chopping it up. Well, that's my dude right there, man. He, man, let me tell you, that dude has some of the funkiest <laughs> crates, man. Yeah, I love it, man. Yeah, He's yeah. gonna be DJing at our event too. That's what's by the way, yeah. And he does it out of the love of his, of his heart yeah. too. He yeah. told me he goes, you, you can't pay me for stuff. Yeah. If I'm gonna be involved in your stuff, I'm doing it for free every time. That's if you right. give me money, I'm just gonna donate it right back to you. You know, so. But he, um, just for the audience, you know, he like these guys had talked about it. I didn't know about it, but they they, I, I was a guest for that show, but I I was surprised with that when I got there. <laughs> so it was a pleasant surprise, and it was really cool to meet you and be able to. Uh, to be on your show that day and i've been kind of following this show since then really you know and i've seen a lot of different artists that i've been in contact with and just folks that i've seen bubbling up throughout town and i i've i've loved the way that that you really focus on the local scene here you know and and really make folks aware of of who's doing what you know because there's a lot of talent here you know and and not just mcs you know djs you know and you know with doing the hip-hop day You know, um, you know, there's just a there's a lot of talent here that I think, you know, just hasn't really gotten out there yet. And, you know, we got to talk more about that hip hop day because, man, I'm really connected to the breakdance community. Yes. And we got to we got to get those we got to get the breakers out there, man. Yeah. And, yeah. But um, yeah. And, and actually, you know, so I didn't make it out to this last one. I was out of town mm-hmm. at the time. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think I was in Italy. That you, yeah. yes. I think you I was were. in Italy. You were. <laughs> but, um, because I would have been, like, I, know I would have been there. Yeah, I know your situation, because I was talking to John. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I would have been out there for sure. Yeah. Somebody, I, I can't remember if it was you, or somebody had asked me to table at that event. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would have brought some breakers with me for sure. Yeah. But, um, anyway, so, but yeah, uh, we got to keep that conversation going for Absolutely. sure. You know? Look, look. Just you, make that thing bigger and better word. each year. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Because, um, so shout out to DJ LG1 since we're on the topic of hip hop. Yep. Yep. Um, he really, he really Star did child. an amazing thing um, this past year, taking over the the situation. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say taking over because he and Star together um, have been meeting with the city all these years, and he was a part of that. But with Star passing away, um, OG just uh, just picked up, you know, the, the portions of, of putting it together uh, from what Star would normally do, and it was the definitely the biggest uh, the biggest event that we've had thus thus far in terms of the fourth year. Um, so so blessed and honored to be a part of it. And we really want wanted to and, and continue to want to represent the elements of hip hop. You know, yeah. I'm an old head, so I always think about the original four elements. So we yep. had DJs, yep. we had MCs, yep. we had we had writers, we had graffiti artists out yeah. there. And uh, believe me, talking about B boys, that was that was definitely a part of the conversation. Yeah. Um. So they're yeah. real tucked down, down, down yeah. beneath. You know, I mean, like they're. I, I truly believe that because of the way that breaking got exploited during the 80s, yeah. that ever, like, at, you know, the, after that, the B-Boys just went underground, man. Yeah. And they keep that culture so tight, yeah. you know, that even with the other elements, you know, they're real sketchy about, you know, being involved in certain things, you know. But um, I think in some ways that's changing a little bit. You know, when you see like Red Bull BC1, you know, the, the, the big... I mean, breaking has gotten pretty, it's mm-hmm. worldwide mm-hmm. and they have major events that go on throughout, uh, the country and around the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, freestyle, you know, Razorback or Silverback. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's, there, there's big events that are going on that have major sponsors, a lot of funding behind <laughs> it. And, um, and you're starting to see the other cultures really kind of, I mean, I Karis one is, has hosted, you know, you they, they've had you know different, especially like MCs from the from the late '80s and '90s. You know, perform, yeah. and they've included you know all style dancers. You know, and that's a whole nother thing. You know, yeah. which which is which is a trip. But um, but you know, it's it's there. There's I think ultimately the elements are really going to eventually come back together. You know, they're either it's either going to fall apart or it's going to the things going to come back together and i think there's still enough love 
or hip hop culture. Yeah. And like people are are devoted and passionate about it enough that it's going to survive. And and I think that I hope that there's going to be this bigger wave of, you know, where it becomes this larger movement again, you know, yeah. I mean, I think it always has been a movement. And I mean, that's just the way of it, you know, but intentionally, you know, being a, a real like social movement, you yeah. know, well, I think, I think what I think that's why there's a lot of other hands yeah. trying to derail it, yeah. to tell you the truth. Well, you know? and, you know, again, I'm old enough to remember when I was, I was so desperate for hip hop as an art form to be accepted. Yeah. And then I remember, you know, when the first time I saw a commercial that had, that was associated, I mean, like the Sprite commercial to me was huge with Pete Rock and CL Smooth. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, listen, I mean, look at, they're, they're finally accepting us. Yeah. And then I think the pendulum swung way to the other side where, you know, people realize, man, we can, we can really make some money off of yeah. this. Yeah. And I think that to a great degree, um, from a consumer standpoint or, yeah, from a consumer standpoint, um, people really saw one area of the art form and just pushed it. And, you know, no harm, no foul. And I think the 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 other parts, the parts that are more true to, I think, the history and the foundation of the art form always existed. But I think that they weren't necessarily being celebrated as much. So I think it's up to, to, to folk like myself, I'll speak for myself as a curator, to continue to find ways to provide platforms. And to me, that's a part of what Hip Hop Day was. And I feel like that's what that's what you're doing with, with your program, with Morpheus Youth Project, is that you're you're providing a platform for these for these for these young people and you're teaching them the true foundation of the art form. Yeah. And I think as long as we can can, can continue to do that, it will never die. Yeah. It will never die. Well, and my whole thing is is that whole social movement aspect of it. You know what I mean because if you look at the history of it, especially if you go way back to, you know, the 70s, um, you know, a lot of these guys were were you know, they were involved in different gangs, right. you know, the Black Spades, right. the Nomads, the, all these different street gangs that were involved in the South Bronx. Mm -hmm. And and even like with the L.A. stuff, you know, I mean, a lot of the early L.A. rappers, you know, I mean, they were at least affiliated or connected to some, you know, gang ties in Los Angeles. Right. And it was an escape from that, you know, um, we're seeing almost like a reverse thing now, you know, which is, uh, you know, a whole nother topic. But um, my whole angle is to to utilize hip hop in the same way that it was initially to bring people together mm -hmm. and to to be a vehicle that young people can actually be in charge of yeah. and use to have a voice and to 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 have an identity you know a, a real identity that 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 um builds them into something mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. And um, and so, I mean, the way that I go about doing it with Morpheus Youth Project is it's really important for me to, you know, the whole relationship aspect of just building community and, and having relationships with the young people, consistency, you know, making sure that, I'm, that we really have good follow through, mm -hmm. but using hip hop, like bringing in. So first of all, I want to break a lot. Like, I think a lot of people think that hip hop artists like folks that are involved in the hip hop community are real selfish and, you know, egotistical. And there's definitely some ego, yeah. you know, I mean, that's definitely a big part of it and machismo and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But let me tell you the hip hop community. And one of the reasons that I've really gone the direction of hip hop mm -hmm. with a lot of the activities that we do is that the hip hop com community has been willing to step up and contribute to what we're doing. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was first doing this, folks were saying, Oh, you know, you're going to have a really tough time, you know, having volunteer, getting volunteers involved and, mm -hmm you know, in kind, you know, you know, people donating this and that. Right. Our in kind is like people donate quite a bit. Yeah. And I'm not talking about monetary donation. I'm talking about people have donated equipment, mm -hmm. laptops, mm -hmm. um, um, sound equipment, recording equipment, uh, their time, you know, uh, artists coming through, you know, we've had folks involved, um, uh, coming through and, and, and helping to do, you know, M like freestyle MC yeah. workshops, um, recording music, beat making, um, breaking. Breaking's been a real big piece of it, you know. Um, and more recently, uh, graffiti art, you know, uh, really 
uh, becoming. So I've had a chance through this in a lot of ways to kind of live, you know, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't maybe kind of vicariously, you know, through some of these young people, but like I get to, I get to, there's a little bit that I get out of it too. You know, I mean, it's, it's, um, I mean, of course, first and foremost, it's about the community and about doing whatever I can for young people, yeah. you know, but it, you know, it's a nice little perk to be able to connect with folks like you and other folks and be able to have these fun experiences, you know, but I mean, to tell you the truth, I, what I was going to do was I was going to invite, you know, some of the guys to come with me tonight, which I is usually something that I do. Yeah. I've just had my hands so full. And like I said, I had the flu early in the week. I just, you know, I'm just going to come down myself today and, you know, yeah, do yeah. things. But I usually like to bring some of the young folks with me or folks that I'm doing stuff with um, so they can have experiences like this, right. you know, right. um, so that their voice can be heard, you know, by other folks and, and and it, and in a lot of ways it validates them you know and and i think that's really important piece of kind of what we're doing here yeah um but um just to kind of speak on you know like what we do yeah. you know that's a lot of you know folks like what so what is tell me what this is you know what is morpheus youth project and so it's a number of things it's a hard thing to explain in one little thing i can tell you here's the mission <laughs> morpheus youth project builds healthy communities for young people through arts and culturally responsive activities well what does that mean you know i mean it's a lot more than that you know so the first thing is is that we use so culture is a very important thing mm -hmm. you know i like to so i teach history and culture in the workshops that i do sometimes it's strict i'm doing something that's culturally specific yeah. You know, a lot of it is Latino related stuff, but also African-American. Uh, those are pieces of history that I'm pretty rounded on. I was a journalist with KBU for the longest time. You know, I've been connected with KBU since 2001. Wow. Okay. I started off as an engineer. Yeah. News and public affairs, all that. So I've been involved, you know, with them for quite some time. Um, and uh, and but I knew that if I was going to engage with young people, I needed to have something that was going to really catch their attention. You know, and hip hop is something that's always done that for me, mm -hmm. you know, and also learning about where I come from. Yeah. Like uh, that was for me was a because, you know, I was a young person who was on the fringes, you know, and that's one of the reasons that I'm involved in this type of work, you know, working with the communities I work with. Um, our target, you know, demographic are youth that are basically on the fringes, you know, coming from communities like outer East Portland, which is where we focus most of our time. Mm -hmm. That's our most, that's the largest youth population in Portland. Yeah. It's the most diverse. You got the, the largest amount of uh, immigrant families, refugee families, and families of color. You know, and I mean, at David Douglas, where I, you know, did some of my initial, initial work out, out there, where, you know, they speak over 50 languages at that school. I think there's a lot of people that still don't know that we have that diverse of a community here yeah. in Portland. And, that, and I think that's intentional. You know, I mean... I mean, we know it's intentional. Well, yeah, We've because, seen the gentrification because, of areas like this, right. where we're at right now. You know, so um, so so that's a that's where I'm focused my attention. When I first got involved, I went to the to the Portland Gang Task Force meetings. They call it something different now, but I went there just to find out, you know, to become acquainted with where those populations are, mm -hmm. you know, or, or where that the trouble is happening. Not you know, not where the people of color are, but I knew I was going to find them, you know. Yeah. And because uh, I know that that's the focus, which is another interesting thing, by the way, yeah. you know, because Oregon and the Pacific Northwest, in terms of gang, quote unquote gangs or what have you, you know, white supremacy is Huge. the largest population. Right. But the focus is all on black and brown gangs, right. you know, right. like it's some epidemic or something, you know, and, and it's and it's actually really small compared to other city, cities. But, you know, and it's perception, right? Yeah. It's all yeah. Perception, right? Yeah. If I if I've been educated that um, that uh, black and brown um, crime in black and brown brown neighborhoods by groups of, committed by groups of people constitutes a gang. And so that's the issue. But I'm not educated that crime crime per perpetuated or, 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 or done by people who are not of color is not, that's not, that's not, that's yeah. not a gang. That's just yeah. people who are. Yeah. They're not being like, criminalized right. in the same way. Right. right. Yeah. And you know, there was an article recently that came out in the Willamette week, which is a, a magazine here. I believe it was the Willamette week, a magazine here in Portland. Um, uh, and I, I forgive me. I don't remember the gentleman's name, but the young man who was, who was murdered by a group of white supremacists, by, uh, by a group of skin yeah. here back in, in the late 80s, 80s, I believe yeah. it was. Yeah. And at that time, I hadn't moved to Portland yet. But uh, yeah, I'm, me I'm too. From the South. Yeah. 
And, you know, I just felt like I there's no reason for me to go to Portland. I mean, if that's how Portland treats black people or people mm-hmm. of color, I ain't going to Portland. Yeah. Um, but anyway, it was sort of it was sort of talking about, you know, this is the, this is the anniversary of that, or revisiting that mm-hmm. story. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've learned so much more recently about the history of the Northwest when it comes oh, to yeah. um, inequality. Yeah. For the most liberal city in the United States. Yeah. Shout out Walida and Marisha for helping to spread that word, word. you know, for real, yeah, big yeah. time. But um, and others, of course, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but um, um, but more recently, I would say. Um, anyways, going back to explaining what we do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so our target demographic are, you know, our marginalized young people, you know, uh, specifically, you know, I mean, I, I do target youth of color because yeah. they're highly marginalized. Yeah. But it's we're not exclusive to, you know, it's not culturally specific in that way. You know, we have culturally specific programming that we can provide, that we can offer. You know, I come to schools and I teach history about the Zoot Suit Riots, about the Sleepy Lagoon case, mm-hmm. about the history of gentrification in Portland, yeah. you know, about the, the long history of, of racism in Portland, or just addressing racism in general. Mm-hmm. What is it, you know? You know, it, it, in, in kind of dispelling the myth that it's prejudice, you know, it's not, you know, it's a system yeah. that's based on that, you know, and talking about that sort of thing with young people, because a lot of times they don't have an opportunity at school. They're not uh, like allowed to talk about that stuff, you know, in any real way, right. you know, and that's one thing I was finding out when I was doing, when I was work, I was doing a, like a, an after school, um, with resolutions Northwest and through the sun program doing a, um, a, uh, 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 restorative justice class with kids that were getting kicked out, you know, that were not getting kicked out, but they were, they were, they were skipping class mostly, you know, and some of the kids that were getting in trouble. And so instead of going to detention, they can come in with me. And I had a whole different activity I was doing with them. Yeah. And a big part of it was teaching them about measure 11, mm-hmm. uh, talking about racism mm-hmm. and talking about issues that were going on, you know, because during the time that I was doing that, we had, well, there were several youth, that had I would there was a handful of young people some of the folks that I was per, directly in contact with that went to that went to jail for pretty long sentences under measure 11 and and as a matter of fact I spoke to them about measure 11 before that happened you know I mean that's just you know I mean yeah. th- not that that's going to keep it from happening right. you know what I mean right. um but um yeah, and I, actually, I still have conversations with some of those individuals today, you know, because some of them I've, I'm still in contact with that I was working with when I was back, you know, at that school, you know. And so, um, you know, I'm not trying to put any names out there or anything no, like no. that, of course, but um, but um, but that's kind of the nature of what we do. So the other aspect of what we do, you know, incorporating hip hop and, and ha- you know, so we do breakdance competitions. Yeah. We our, our competitions are awesome. We helped uh, New Birth Crew host a couple of their last competitions. The last one that they just did, they did on their own. So it was kind of cool. You know, they're like, you know, a little older now. And they're like, hey, we're going to do it ourselves. I'm like, hey, man, that's cool. You know, so let me know what you need help with, you know. Um, And uh, so um, just like, so the the breakdance community is just really, or just the, I should say the breaking community, not the breakdance community, but the breaking community is is real vibrant. and, And there's some real talented folks. And they're deeply involved and really love coming out to uh, the places that we work at. So they're 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 heavily involved in the community with Morpheus Youth Project, nice. along with a lot of other folks that are involved in the hip hop community. So you know, like um, R and D. I don't know if you guys have heard of R and D, research and development. Um, uh, Dusty Fox and and Rufus Gaspar uh, have been a big part of the team, especially you know Alex. You know, yeah. I mean, he's been. A major factor from pretty much from day one um i don't know if you remember mighty misc you know uh uh the little yes. little elon yeah, yeah, you know yeah yeah, yeah, yeah yeah little guy he was i mean he actually became a board member and so did dust dust from yeah. uh elevated mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. um when him and chad used to you know yeah. when those guys used to be in a crew together yeah. they actually in, introduced me to a lot of the portland like rap scene yeah. when i first got involved and and they got involved that's how i got in touch or I, I, that's how I met a lot of folks, Milk and, you know, uh, um, Wyatt, yeah. you know what I mean? There's all kinds of folks. Um, and got it. And, and, and so, you know, I was going to shows left and right, you know, and, and just kind of, and I would talk to people about what I was doing and folks were really interested. So we were doing MC Cyphers out of Rosewood. Yeah. Uh, we were doing, um, uh, and, and breaking, you know, and, uh, like folks from uh, Formula Boogie, mm-hmm. uh, uh, 
Alex Trunell, you know, is a breaker who he's the one that was on Tosh Point. Oh, that's what okay. that, that's like his claim to fame, you know. Yeah, yeah. But um, good dude, good cat. He's been involved pretty much from day one. New Birth Crew, uh, Kevin Lay, uh, Tombo, you know, um, uh, DJ Weather, uh, DJ uh, Grimrock. Uh, I mean, we've had uh, Wicked. You know, they, they've all done stuff with with Morpheus Youth Project, and you know when they come out. So so I so those folks, because they're so talented and because they're they're I mean, not only are they good at their craft, but they also engage really well with young people. Yeah. Um, it's captivating for young people and it allows them to open up enough to where they want to step in and try yeah. and they want to learn more. And so that's an opportunity for us to talk about culture, yeah. to talk about community, to talk about racism, to talk about different things that are important for us to talk about. And then we just build and basically we just start building this family from there and it's been a family that's just grown and grown and grown and um and so so that other component of what we do is that we focus on three major areas of where we're going to be at one of them is that outer east portland area where a lot of the young people that get locked up come from you know it's also north portland still uh but there's also hillsboro salem you know little pockets here and there yeah other places where a lot of the folks are coming from. Um, but so that's the first like prong, I guess, or the first area geogra or, you know, just area that we focus on. The second would be like entry level, um, like juvie, you know, yeah. so Multnomah yeah. County juvenile detention or Donnelly long, yeah. you know, it's got like five different names. Yeah. Um, uh, Marion County juveniles, another place uh, that we're doing programming at, um, and like Multnomah County Juvenile, we do stuff like twice a month. It's actually, we've had a little time off from there. So I'm getting ready to get back in there and do some more stuff. Yeah. Um, but we've done break, you know, I, I did a couple uh, breaking uh, workshops in there yeah. with the male and the female population right. in there. Right. Um, uh, I've done Latino group there for quite some time. Um, at Marion County Juvenile, I just come in and they allow me to come in during the class time. Yeah. And I'm a guest speaker for, you know, an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours yeah. at Marion County Juvenile. And I'll teach about hip hop culture, breaking, you know, just recently I brought in Doe Rock from Portland City Rockers. Yeah. And he just like that dude is such a character, man. He the kids just can't <clears throat> like get enough of him because yeah. he's just got this energy about him, you know, and when he's teaching, he just kind of has this funny way of doing it. And so he and I will just kind of vibe a certain way when we're teaching the students yeah. and we like to kind of tease the kids a little bit you know to get them mm -hmm. kind of into it and stuff and he totally was getting into it that day and so yeah and then like that day we went from marion county straight to mclaren youth corrections to the intake area mm -hmm. to work with the guys that are on the unit there yeah. they keep them in so so that's the third spot so we got the entry level like juvenile just which is more like short term yeah. unless you catch a measure 11 charge yeah. which will send you to the state facility so that's the third area yeah. That we focus on so being in those three strategic areas allows us to for our programming to overlap mm -hmm. in a way that because our whole thing is about building trust with young people so if we can connect with them at any point of that you know and so uh, there's kind of a fourth component too when they get out of mclaren yeah. we're still a touch point you right. know we're still in contact because once you're involved with us that's that's a forever thing you know like we're going to be you're part of the family from that on that point on whether you you know it's up to you really how much you want to engage in that yeah. you know because we don't ever want to push that on anybody so um so a lot of times they'll come back circle back around and you know stefan fowler is someone who i met while he was locked up in yeah. mclaren youth corrections and he's now a board member of morpheus wow. youth project you know that's dope and he's an amazing powerful talented young person yeah who um, he works for Resolutions Northwest mm -hmm. and is an amazing mentor, yeah. you know, an amazing person to have on their staff. I wish I could hire him. If I had the the money for staff, you know, I'd, be, I'd do that, you know. Um, Noah Schultz is another one who's who's part of, like, my resource council, you know, and he's a major – he's, like, really uh, – um, like a spokesperson for Morpheus Youth Project, big time. And he's traveling all over the country. <coughs> but Noah Schultz um, – I mean, there's just a, there's a lot of young people that we've been connected to throughout well, the years. I think it's you know one of the things I think that we one of the things that we know about young people who are in difficult situations, who um, make bad choices of their own, or, or just in situations that drive them into poor places, is 
a lot of what you've touched on is the reality. Young people um, will have a difficult time trusting people. And then there's mm-hmm. also that sense of, of fear of abandonment, which is real, right? And that's oftentimes what drives not just young people, even they're waiting adults, for it, right? Yeah, that's what you know. I'm gonna go wherever I'm accepted, and often mm-hmm. and sometimes the things that that we're accepted are the things that are not the healthiest for us. Mm-hmm. So what you folk are doing, when you say that fourth component, I mean to me that's that that's that's huge. Yeah, that 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 that, that kids realize, oh, this wasn't just somebody who was in here doing it for you know for show. That not nah, like. I'm home now, and I still have an opportunity to build and learn, and, yeah. and, and, and have a, have a community. Get them excited about things too. You know, I mean, think about a family. You know, yeah. what I mean, a family is made up of all different age levels. Right. You know, color, whatever. Right. It's a mix of of different. You know, uh, of you know, age groups. Uh, some might have. Uh, you know, might be disabled in mm-hmm. certain ways. Some may, you may have a very mixed family, yeah. you know, so families are diverse, you know? And so if youth are only with youth and they are the ones who are leading youth, yeah. you know, you're missing the wisdom of the elders, right. you know, you're wi- you're missing that other, that other element there. And I think it's really been like, we've really let our young people down yeah. throughout the years. The last, I don't know. I mean, I always tell the young people that I work with that, you know, indigenous cultures, certain indigenous cultures plan like eight, nine generations ahead, yeah. you know, for their youth, you know, we're not even planning for the youth that are right here in front of us, you know, and, and, and we're not even connected to them. We totally will shut ourselves off from them because the you know the world and world is getting more and more um um what's the word i'm looking for it's getting more like um like extreme you know what i mean everything is extreme the violence the mm-hmm. sex the everything the exposure mm-hmm. is just getting more and more extreme and i think for adults you know we're like oh you know youth take that and they act out with that too you know and adults see that and they're like oh my god i want nothing to do with that and they just and it's just like don't want you know they're not connected to young people at all and they're not putting anything there so that young people can make sense of those things yeah. you know they're not engaged in a way where young people can kind of understand where that comes from and what they're going through or even just be able to talk to somebody, you know, who has some life experience, you know, um, they're just stumbling their way through it. And so they get to a point where they're just jaded by it. And they're like, well, you, you know, who are you, you know, and, and why should I listen to you? You know, you haven't been around, you know? Yeah. So, you know, what, one of the things that we try to do is to try and bridge that, you know, and, and to be there. And that's why consistency is such an important thing. You know, no one's going to trust you if you say that you, that, that, oh, yeah, we're going to do this for you and you never follow through on yeah. it. You know, I don't tell the young people that I'm going to do stuff unless I know that I'm going to follow through on it, yeah. you know, and, and, and I make sure that I follow through, you know, and, and I listen to them, too. You know, a lot of the programming that I run, it's, it comes from ideas that they had, mm-hmm. you know, and then, I, and then I just help them to kind of facilitate that, you know, um, uh, you know, that I, I, I I think it's really important to listen to them, you know, and to not just be like, well, here, I'm here to tell you about how to do this or to show you this. This is how you should be doing things. You know, you know, you do things, young people do things, however they're going to do things. You know, they're going to do it whether you tell them to or not, you know, and, and so it's important for you just to be there, you know, like they, they need that guidance when they stumble. Kids are going to stumble. It's part of their growth. Part of them, you know, becoming an adult, mm-hmm. you know, is that they have just like we did, you know, um, but they need, you know, elders to be there when they stumble so that they can help pick them back up and help them get back on their feet and help them keep moving forward. You know, so you're <clears throat> you're you're you you're building into this. You're building this program, obviously passionate about it, um, but you make a, you bring up a great point in terms of the way we I will include myself in that we as adults um, manage the disconnect that we have mm-hmm. with, with young people. So, you know, someone listens to this and they say, okay, I, I hear what you're saying. And that, that really, that really rings true to me. I want to make a change. I'm an adult and I want to make a change. Like when, what would be, what would be your advice? What would be your guidance? The first thing to do to say, okay, I'm going to, for adults. Yeah. For adults. Well, just to be involved. What just does that mean? like, what like does that mean? show up, show up, be present. Yeah. You know what I mean? Be present. That alone, it, it, it's funny because, you know, a lot of the youth that I work with are kids of colors and I'll, kids of color and I'll have 
like white folks that'll be like, well, you know, I want, I, I just worry that, you know, you know, they're involved in this hip hop stuff that I, you know, what do I have to contribute? You know, I'm like, just being there. Yeah. You know what I mean? doesn't matter what your background is or whatever, you know, you're, you know, a little something about something because you've lived in the, you've been on the planet a little bit longer, That's you know? Yeah, so dude. be there, you know, just be there, you know, so that alone is just a major thing. Listen, you know, don't be judgmental, you know, try and not be as ju be judgmental as much as possible. You know, I mean, I go at it with my guys about, you know, we talk about Takashi, you know, those guys are like, you know, six, nine, yeah. you know, some it's back and, you know, some of them are into it, some of them are not. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh my God, you know, <laughs> but I'm like, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, I, I, I remember, I mean, this is probably a bad example, but I remember MC Hammer and yeah. like Father MC yeah. and they were just entertainment, yeah. you know, it was the same thing, but yeah. it wasn't as, like I said, it's, things are more extreme now. Yeah. So people are having tattoos on their face and stuff like that because it's more extreme, you know, like, than it was back in the day, back in the day if you had a tattoo here and there it's like whoa right, you know right. especially if you had one in your face yeah, like oh this change, dude is hard you know yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah yeah man it's different you know and and uh so um so you know i mean adults need to one of the things that's difficult is you know we're so busy now yeah. you know we live in a capitalist society that's kind of gone out of control yeah you know, and it, it, I've heard people call it unregulated capitalism. I've heard some people call it soft fascism. I've heard people, I mean, people have always been called it fascism, you know, or whatever. But, um, but it's, our society is a me society. Mm -hmm. Very much so. You know, Very and, so. and it doesn't allow us the time to really be a we society mm -hmm. like we should. Mm -hmm. It's not designed that way. It's all about consumerism. It's all about, like dirty politics right. um, and like being comfortable, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, just enough to where we're going to, you know, like we work our butts off in this country, you know, mm -hmm. we're working long hours mm -hmm. and, you know, whether you got a salary job, you know, I worked a job where I was, I was working so many hours. I was actually getting paid less each year, yeah. you know, yeah. because, because of the amount of hours I was putting in yeah. and the expectations that were put on me. But then you also have family members that are um, like migrant families yeah. where because of their status, they're nervous about trying to apply for any, I mean, they're just not going to apply for those the other types of jobs that, that, you know, a lot of Americans will be applying for yeah. because they know that, you know, it's a risk, you know, so they're working two, three jobs, yeah. getting paid and being exploited at that. Mm -hmm. And just to put something on the table for their kids, but they're not home for their kids because of that. They're not working, yeah. And so then the kids are living on the streets. They're running things at the house. They're raising themselves. Yeah. yeah. And it's like they're at school and the teachers are like, oh, I need you to do this. And they're like, who are you to tell me what to do? I'm in charge at my house. Yeah you know, and on the street, you know, so, and then they turn them into these little monsters, you know, they criminalize them and they push them out of the classroom and they push them into adjudication, yeah. basically, yeah. you know, on, on the streets, they're, they're followed by the police constantly. I mean, I, I've, I've seen every aspect of it uh, deeply, you know, and I've seen, and, and let me tell you, I've got young people that I've known from uh, high school level all the way to their time of, of, of just about the time of them getting out of prison, you know, and measure 11, if for those that don't know what measure 11 is, you need to find out, yeah. you know, yeah. but what it is, is, is it's a mandatory minimum sentencing law in Oregon. It's, it's, it, you know, it's, there's a, a 22 different charges that you can land that can get you at the minimum, uh, just shy of six years in, in prison. And that's anywhere from age 15 all the way up. You know what I mean? So just imagine. And so one thing that I've learned throughout the years is, is brain development of young people. You know, uh, the frontal lobe development happens between like ages 12 to about 25. Yeah. That's the most important time of their development. Uh, that's when they're going through their psychological and cognitive growth. And the psychological side and the cognitive side are both, they vary depending on the youth. And, you know, at how quickly they develop and but ultimately they kind of come together roughly around 25 where they can start seeing, you know, further ahead. They're less compulsive. They're not doing such daredevilish stuff. You know, that's all normal for young people. You know, their brains haven't 
like literally physically haven't even grown, grown. you know? And so (laughs) you imagine throwing an adult sentence on a young person when they're going through those stages, youth doesn't matter how severe the offense don't truly understand what they're getting themselves involved in because they're still compulsive because they're still very emotional. They're very, they're going through puberty. You know, they're dealing with these things that they've never dealt with before and don't understand, you know, for the first time, you know, and then, you know, you throw trauma in the mix, you know, which I'll tell you the one thing you may have kids that are coming from these different gang affiliations where they won't even, they can't even be in the same room together, that kind of thing. Um, They'll be the, uh, the one thing that all of them have in common, uh, and this is just all the youth in general that I've encountered that are locked up, yeah. is that they all have experienced some severe forms of trauma. Yeah. You know, whether it's something like not having food on the table, all the way up to seeing your your father being killed in front of you, uh, being taken by the police. You know, uh, siblings being killed. Um, People, you know, there's a whole variety of different types of, you know, forms of trauma that young people can experience. And, and let me tell you, they've gone through it. The ones that I'm, that I work with in, in youth corrections. And that's the one thing that all of them have in common. I I have this, um, I actually have a a presentation that I do on gang culture. Mm -hmm. And I talk about just kind of the history of Los Angeles gangs, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I'm using the word gangs kind of in quotes you know um it's really the history of black and brown folks in los angeles and like how folks arrived i even talk a little bit about how they arrived here in portland and what some of that history is but i kind of walk through the generations of trauma that so not only have we are young people dealing with trauma in their homes but we have generations of trauma that continue you know, and there's neurological science that goes beyond it's behind that too. Down, it's passed down, yeah. yeah. And not only that, not only is it passed down like in your genes and right. in your, you know, your psyche, right. um, it's it's around you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because we've been held back. You know, that race that other folks were able to start before we were, mm-hmm. we're still trying to catch up. Yeah. You know, and we're still quite a ways behind. And that's still very evident around us, especially in a city like Portland. You know, we were talking earlier. Well, the time, especially in the times in which we live in 2018. Yep. yep. Yeah. So, um, and you know, things are extreme, you know, things are, you know, so you have all these different things that young people are dealing with right now. You know, you throw something like Measure 11 on them and man, that's a, that's, that's something else. Yeah. You know, I mean, I can't tell you how many young people I've worked with throughout the years at McLaren Youth Corrections or even other facilities, because I do, I, I've been at other Oregon Youth Authority facilities. But um, McLaren is actually where, I've, where I spend most of my time yeah. um, and where a lot of our activities take place. And, um, you know, we've got guys in there that, are, that shouldn't be in there. Mm-hmm. They've matured. They are not the same person that they were when they committed their crime, no matter how severe. Mm-hmm. And believe me, there's some, there's quite a few that are, Pretty severe crime. I mean, there's quite a few that are in there for murder, that are in there for, you know, attempted murder, that are in there for, for rape, for, you know, sodomy, mm-hmm. uh, different levels of robbery. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, and, and had been doing things back and forth, you know. But I mean, you know, but we have, you know, I got, I got a young man named Ezekiel, you know, who was involved in a very severe crime, who, you know, found himself in academics. You know, and he, he never thought he would, he'd get through high school, yeah. let alone college. And, and he recently uh, graduated with an associate's degree, mm-hmm. you know, and that was a major achievement. Yeah. And I, and I think he's the first one in his family uh, to achieve that, but that was major. Yeah. And this, him and his brother actually are extremely intelligent young men, yeah. you know, and um, to see him taking that path, he's a totally different person even just from the time that i first knew him you know so yeah man i don't even know how many years i've known him now but um it's been a few years you know he's one of my guys that's been with the group for quite some time and he's really grown into an amazing young man you know he um i remember he was talking he was asking me for a little bit of help on 
you know, understanding the school to prison pipeline. And I gave him a whole bunch of research material on this, this, he really liked this presentation that I did and I just gave it to him. I said, yeah. here it is. Yeah. You know, I don't usually give my presentations to folks, but you know, you're going to do something with this, yeah. you know? And that was something that he used for, uh, while he was getting his degree. Yeah. And, um, and, be- and he's now become like a spokesperson on it, you know, and on, and on, um, restorative justice, you know, to the point where there is a PSU criminal justice um, capstone, you know, a professor at PSU who does capstones in criminal and juvenile justice, who was asked to contribute to this major conference of all these different, you know, um, folks that are involved you know, with criminal justice in some way, shape or form. And through, um, through video conference, they were able to bring him as a guest to explain wow. school to prison pipeline coming from someone who was most heavily impacted, <coughs> you know, yeah. because not only was he criminalized as a young person and targeted, you know, as a gang member before he was ever involved yeah. in anything like that. Um, and ev- eventually he took on that robe, you know, or what have you took yeah. on that, that role yeah. and, and became it yeah. and got himself a hefty sentence. Yeah. You know, he's still got a lot of years ahead of him. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, where he's at right now, yeah. I'm really proud of that young man, you know. And I and and I see where he's going. He, he's got a tough road ahead of him, yeah. you know, because he's got to go to the adult facility, yeah. and and he's taking a different path now than he originally was, right. you know. And the, you know, so that's going to be a tricky thing all in itself. But at the same time, you know, he's committed, you know, and he's ready, and and he's he knows what he's going after, you know, and you know. That's bravery right there, you know. It, it's got to be. It's got to feel really good to, you know, have these. You, you've mentioned a couple of um, individuals who you've known over, over the time that you've been working with, or that you've been doing the Morpheus Youth Project, who've grown into whether it be leadership roles and, and a part of, or have just really grown into, um, adults and have really changed the the trajectory of their life. And mm-hmm. that's got to be hugely rewarding. I asked you earlier if people are interested in, um, you know, in, in figuring out a way that they can maybe change their own perception. And you said one of the things to do is just, just be there. Mm-hmm. We'll talk a little bit about what there is. You guys have an event coming up on December the 1st. Oh, yeah. Um, so uh, at the, the at the Lagunitas, uh, jeez, I'm getting all tongue-tied here. <laughs> the Lagunitas Community Room on, it's like 3rd and Broadway. Um, uh, if you go to our website, uh, well, actually, go to Facebook. That's probably the best place to get our social media pages. You can find Morpheus Youth Project on Facebook, on on Instagram, and I've been putting that stuff out there so that folks are aware. Kind of use Facebook as my calendar. You know, that's the event calendar. It's convenient. Um, but you'll see all the details there. But we're gonna do basically what we're doing there is we've got we've got the place from six to nine. Uh, DJ Weather's coming through. He's gonna be spinning. You know. He, He's, you know, yes, I DJ know, Weatherman, he Sean's lays well. down. I haven't seen him in a minute. But yeah, yeah, man, he's such a good dude. Yeah. Um, But he's going to be coming through, and he's going to be playing some good. He always plays, and he blends so nice, too. Yeah. Um, But he'll be getting down uh, with us at night. Um, uh, We're going to kind of have, like, stations set up that basically show what we've been involved in and who are the folks that were involved in. We'll have some of the breakers that are going to be there with us. Yeah. Um, like Kevin Lay from New Birth Crew and Doe Rock from Portland City Rockers to to kind of represent Morpheus Youth Project in a way. They're going to do a little showcase, you know, so that you can see the type of talent that we're teaching to yeah. young people, yeah. whether they're locked up or not, yeah. um, from the folks that actually are involved in teaching them those things. Yeah. And so we want folks to come through and be able to interact and talk and, like, visit each of those stations and, and find out more about what's going on other than just like, Hey, Carlos, what's this about? Yeah. Like actually going, like if you're interested in poetry, go talk to our verbal escape poetry group. This, that is a group that's made up of guys who learned poetry while they were locked up yeah. at McLaren youth corrections yeah. when they, and they became really good at it. Yeah. Uh, one of my volunteers threw the first uh, poetry slam at McLaren youth corrections ever. And, um, and uh, they, and it was a huge success. Yeah. And out of that birthed, you know, this, group was formed you know the verbal escape poetry group and it was just a handful of guys at the time and now it's it, it's i think it's going to start growing growing into a larger group 
But these guys, their poetry is so powerful, man. Because they're t talking about, they're talking about a whole variety of issues that are just being ignored. Yeah. You know, so that it's so powerful. I mean, last year we did an event at Lagunitas Community Room, and our poetry um, guys did a showcase. Like they did a, they were the highlight. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, our breakers came out, and and the poets came out, and yeah. the poets had people's jaws on the floor. Yeah. I mean, they literally were just like. Like, didn't know what to do afterwards. They were like, I didn't realize these situations were so severe, you know. And so they'll be there. <laughs> nice. uh, uh, Emily Prado, who is with X Ray FM, yeah. is going to be there doing a little podcast. Um, um, she's just, she's someone who's been connected to us. She's come out to McLaren a few times. The guys love her. Yeah. You know, she's a great person and um, great journalist, you know. And um, so we're honored to have her out there with us. Um, uh, Mayfair. From Drenchtown Graffiti is going to yeah. be out there doing some live art for us. That's an amazing partner right there. He's a curator of graffiti art. That's how I've become, you know, um, familiar with a lot of the graffiti artists here in Portland. Yeah. Um, and man, let me tell you, you've got some talent. You know, I mean, that, those guys got some talent. Yeah. And so, um, you know, some of those folks are, are getting involved. Some of them have been involved. There's a couple of the guys that have come out to McLaren with me. To, to We actually are doing graffiti art at McLaren, I've seen I've seen some of the some of the the, the uh, social media posts and it's I think that's I think that's amazing. It's another opportunity for people to express themselves through art. Yeah, which is um, that art's going to be featured there that night too. Right. So we have a few panels that our young guys did, um, and then we'll also have canvases and different yeah. things and poetry from the young guys, yeah. and it's powerful, you know. And it's just and it's amazing how much talent these young people have, you know. And it's like. This is a whole nother thing that kind of trips me out. You know, why do we have so many artists locked up? And, you know, I can't help but think we took all this stuff out of the schools. Wow, that's deep. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now the kids don't feel like they relate. Yeah. So why go to school? Huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, bruh. I'm right there with you, man. It's so I'm crazy. Right you, you know, man. I mean, there's just, I, you know. We, we look historically through through the history of this planet, man, and we see how important art is for communi for cultural communication. Right? Mm -hmm. We're studying. Oh, we're major. studying history. Yeah. And so much of the history that we study is through art, right? Yeah. Yeah. If we don't, if we're not curating that now, then what happens? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we got a lot of stuff going on that night. We've got some raffles and different things. I mean, it's partly as a fundraiser, yeah. but that's not really our focus for the night. Our yeah. focus is to really show folks what we've been involved in and for them to get a chance to come and really just hang out, get to know who Morpheus Youth Project yeah. is, yeah. and just have a good time. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Lagunitas Brewery, he's gonna, they got like seven, eight beers on tap. It's yeah. always good stuff, man. Yeah. Like, I've, I've been a fan of Lagunitas forever, so right. when we were able to do something there, I'm like, it's on, you yeah, know. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's 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 gonna be a lot of fun. It so always is. We always have a good time. All ages. Okay. Um, and and it is free. You know, we ask for a five dollar donation yeah. if you if you have it to yeah, to if offer. If y'all come out, go go ahead and bring go ahead and bring five dollars, man. You, yeah. you, you've heard all of the great things that that they've been able to do, and we want to continue to con to to contribute and support. And one of the ways we know that you that you can do is with your wallet. So well, and actually, just so you know, that actually becomes ten dollars. Every every donation that we get right now, the, the Collins Foundation is matching up to five thousand dollars. Oh, word. Okay. So, if you if you, we we got to keep track of it, you right, know. Right. So any any of the beer that's purchased, you know, if you buy a Morpheus Youth Project shirt, yeah. If you know you buy a piece, actually the pieces of artwork you can purchase, and that's going straight to the youth who created the art. Wow. So we don't take anything out of that. That goes directly to them. That's and cool. uh. And, you know, but we want folks to see it and hear it and what have you. Yeah. Um, but Collins Foundation is is it's part of a grant that we're we're working with with them. And so the last five grand of it, if we're able to raise five grand, yeah. you know, they're going to double it. So it becomes 10, you know, that's so up, so that's part of this campaign. And and I mean, that's like I said, it's not our main focus right now. Um, we just want folks to know who we are, to yeah. become, you know, get on our mailing list, yeah. you know, become part of our community. Yeah. You know, that's really what we want to happen. You know, the rest will come together, you know. Yeah. And so um, that's really the focus, you know. We just want to have a good time with folks. All right. So that goes down on December the 1st, 6 to 9 p.m., all ages. Yep. Lagunitas uh, Community Room on Northeast Broadway. 
uh, check out the event page on Facebook, uh, but also check out the check out the website MorpheusYouth.org. Yeah, yeah, MorpheusYouth.org. Yeah, yeah, on Facebook and and uh, Instagram, it's Morpheus Youth Project. Yeah, yeah. But on the website, it's MorpheusYouth.org. That's yep. what's up. That's what's up. Yeah. Bro, this was uh, this was cool, man. Uh, this was yeah, cool. Yeah, I agree, saying? man. Like I said, it's it's been it's been really cool to watch over the years, just seeing the events pop up on on my Facebook oh, cool. timeline, and um, just to know that you know what I was introduced to seven eight years ago continues to grow and flourish, and um, the positive impact that what you're doing is having on the community in a very grand way. So, big ups to you, man, for for um, using your skill set and your time and your and your heart for impacting people. I think that 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 should be celebrated. You know, the old saying, you know, give people their flowers while they're alive to to, to smell them. So these are my flowers to you, though. Oh, you know, thank you. To you for, for what you do. Appreciate it. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. My man Carlos Chavez, uh, Morpheus Youth Project is the group. Be sure to um, to continue to support good people doing good things, man. Once again, the event is going down on December the first. A couple of other things, uh, business to get to, man. Once again, I got to give a big shout out my folk at acapella apparel for their support of the cliff notes podcast you can check them out their website is acapella.com that's a-k-e-p-e-l-e.com some dope dope gear um i'm rocking there i'm rocking the, the one of the hoodies man the, the hip-hop i was checking that out like that yeah you know what I'm saying? Sedgwick. um and i got on i got on the beanie to <clears throat> I got on the beanie too, man, because you know oh, it's nice. winter weather out yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, big ups to big ups to acapella for their support. Um, of course, big ups to X Ray FM for their continued support uh, by allowing us to record the Cliff Notes podcast here in the studio. Big ups to my guy Theory Has It for um, doing the official theme song for the Cliff Notes podcast. Remember that on December the twenty seventh, we have the December edition of Mike Check PDX at the White at the White Eagle. Uh, it's going down with with. Um, uh, Last of a Dying, Be- Last of a Dying Breed with Mike Crenshaw, and um, my guy Micah Fletcher. Taylor oh yeah, is gonna be on the bill. Um, Destro Destructive, Old Dominion is on the bill. Um, Sea Goods is doing a beat set. Trox is actually gonna do a DJ set. DJ OG One is gonna be in the build, and I'll be there hosting. Uh, our new sponsors, big ups to uh, to them just for seeing the vision and continuing to to and 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 for supporting us and and you know. Uh, be sure to follow them, and if you are in uh, in the market for pressing up some vinyl, Cascade Record Pressing is who you want to check out. They are a sponsor for Mike Check, and they're the only they're the only vinyl record manufacturing plant here in the Northwest, man. So um, automated one, so you definitely want to check them out if you're trying to press up some vinyl. Um, and then our newest sponsor, Ear Trumpet Labs. So looking forward to having them on board and, and rocking with uh, with some of the Ear Trumpet Lab microphones. So come out to Mike Check so you can hear them. Great sounding microphones, man. Local companies getting behind uh, getting behind organizations and groups that are trying to, to provide platforms for artists and just grow this thing that we love that we call hip hop. Uh, check us out all over social media. Check me out all over social media at DJ Cliff. It's at DJ K L Y P H. Or hit up the website uh, djcliff.com. Uh, Mike Check also on social media. Mike Check PDX. Um, once again, MorpheusYouth.org is the website. Morpheus, Morpheus Youth Project on social media, um, and uh, you know, just continue to, to 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 build this community, man. Uh, once again, Carlos, thank you so much, bro. Appreciate thank you for having me. For real, I really real appreciate cool. it. No doubt. Uh, remember, you can subscribe to the Cliff Notes podcast everywhere you listen to your podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify. Uh, there's some news that will hopefully be coming soon about another place that you can check out podcasts. Um, if you rock with Alexa, just say Alexa, enable the Cliff Notes podcast, and you'll get updates every time we drop one of these. If you rock with us on Apple Podcasts, please rate and, um, and comment. That does a lot for helping us grow what we're trying to do. All right, y'all. Until we get an opportunity to do this again, man, God bless you. Um, Yeah, peace.